Let's get Eurified. Alrighty, so we're doing something a little different today. Considering we're a quarter of the way in what looks to be a jam-packed year of Yuri, I thought I'd make a little video listing out all the anime to look forward to and any potential Yuri anime in the upcoming season, which of course is Spring 2023. And by the way, I am perfectly aware that these types of seasonal videos are more of magical speciality, so let it be clear that I was inspired by him to make this video, and I make no qualms about it. He definitely deserves massive credit for all the coverage he's done on Yuri over the years, and I believe all that passion and effort of his should be rightfully praised. Link to his channel in the description. Anyway, back on topic. I'll be going through all the anime broadcasting this spring that are already established as Yuri, and a few new anime that look to have some Yuri potential. I'll give my honest two cents on all of them, based on everything I know and from all the trailers I've seen. And of course, spoilers will be in effect for all the returning anime. Anyway, let's get this show on the road. Let's begin with all the guaranteed Yuri anime, shall we? So first off is a show still fresh in our memories, and absolutely needs no introduction. It's Mobile Suit Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. Or for short, Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. Or even shorter, Gundam Witch. Or even shorter than that, Gwitch. So Gwitch will be back after a mere three months, and it looks like Season 2 will crank the stakes all the way up to 11. No doubt we'll be seeing even more space battles, space politics, space corporatism, space drama, and space romance. Everything you want from an epic space opera franchise. But at the end of the day, what's most important is that this is an anime about space family. And that's what's so powerful about it. So one can only surmise how our lovely duel will fix their rocky relationship. Mirena just witnessed the love of her life turn someone into tomato pest. And Salada is under some kind of weird mind control from her scheming, larger-than-life foxy mama. Plenty of tears and pain are soon to come, but I hold on hope that they'll do right by our sweet and crazy Gundam girls. It'll be a difficult journey, but that's just how a lot of engagement periods turn out. You meet a girl, you take an interest in her hobbies, you fight a little along the way, you make up with her, you find out that she's a murderer, and then you make up with her again. Trust me, I've done it like three times. Next is a show that I've been eagerly anticipating for a long time. It's Birdie Wing Season 2. Fuck yeah. This was one of the highlights of 2022 for me, and we're talking about a year that had two Love Live seasons, a Kebby's Harem adventure, the return of Shami Momo, and Bochi the freaking rock. Birdie Wing managed to go toe to toe with all of them. It ticked all of my favorite boxes. It had action, comedy, drama, romance, and absolute nonsense. So what can we expect to see for season two? Well now that our two lead golfing lovers are together again at last, the gloves will finally come off as they duke it out with other equally talented golfers. The entire season will most likely focus on a tournament, and how they'll have to learn to work together to overcome the lineup of new rivals. And of course, we can expect said rivals to have their own unique quirks and eccentric golfing styles. You know how these things go, and dare I say, perhaps some new ships will emerge. Incidentally, I was kind of surprised to see that the whole Mafia thing will be coming back for this season. I guess there's still a few loose ends to tie up. Plot aside, the real fun will be seeing how Eve and Ellie will grow as a couple. They clearly have the hots for each other, so this golf tournament will be the perfect opportunity for them to close the gap and help each other with their holes in one. Next is an anime that will most likely be deemed the Yuri Crown Jewel of the season. Yuri is my job. Which is why I'll be talking about Yuri is my job. Let it be known that I'm the first one to make that joke. Anyway, so what the hell is this anime about? Well, it focuses on a little blonde high school girl named Shiraki Hime, who puts on her best facade of being a prim and proper perfect lady, in hopes of one day scoring a trophy wife position to a billionaire, allowing her to take it easy for the rest of her life. Her dream is put on hold, however, when she accidentally injures a girl after falling from a dangerous height of three steps of stairs. The injured girl is a manager of a local cafe, and after learning that her arm was broken from the fall, she coerces Hime into working there for an indeterminate amount of time. Cafe Lee which is the name of the workplace, is revealed to be a Class S Yuri-themed cafe, complete with rosaries, teacups, and flirting. He may also meet one of her co-workers, a sweet and kind older girl named Ayana Koji Mitsuki. However, at one point she ends up pissing her off after calling her the old word. No, not obtuse. What did you call me? Yeah, that. Afterwards, they begin their emotionally stunted relationship as Schwesters. Unfortunately, things don't go swifty for them, as Mitsuki seems to have a chip on her shoulder, and Hime is on the receiving end of her rage. Much hilarity ensues after that, but in terms of the Yuri, apart from what looks to be a slow burn romance between the two leads, there is a one-sided Yuri crush by one of the other characters. You can guess who pretty quickly from watching the trailer. Anyway, I was pretty lukewarm about the manga after reading the first volume a couple of years ago, so I'm quite hopeful that the anime can pull me back into the series. One last 
thing I wanted to point out is that the anime is being made by Passion Studio, which is notorious for making smutty, over-the-top, fanservice up the wazoo anime. Not exactly what I expected for a series like this, but then again, I only read one volume, so maybe they cranked the lewdness factor up later down the road. Alright, so with a guaranteed Yuri anime done, let's move on to lighter Yuri anime and speculations. Koma 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 Bear Punch seems like a good place to start. This subtly named show is the second season of Kuma 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 Bear, which follows the isekai adventures of cuddly powerhouse Yuna, her adorable bear companions, and her soon-to-be wife Fina. Now to be honest, I'm kind of running on fumes trying to remember the first season of the show, and most of that has to do with how mediocre it was. As I recall, the things that happened were pretty mundane and very straightforwardly told. Not a lot to bite into, despite the show taking place in a fantastical setting. Wow, Gareth, you're really selling the show to me. But seriously, even though the trailers for the next season don't seem to give us a lot of information, I really hope that it can be much better than the last. At the very least, we'll most likely see Yuna and Fina, who is the young girl Yuna saves in the first season, get more alone time with each other, probably going on more adventures. They already built a love nest together, so next would be them going on their honeymoon. Also, something random I just wanted to mention is the premise of the show. This kind of flew over in my head for a while, but our main character Yuna was actually isekai to some kind of game world, right? So does that mean all the characters are nothing but a bunch of zeros and ones? Also, we know that Yuna can't log out of this world and return to reality, so that means her real body is lying around somewhere wearing a VR headset, right? I mean, won't she eventually die from hunger or something? Aren't there people who might check up on her too? I don't know, if there are answers to these questions, please let me know. But so far, I got the feeling that the writers don't want us thinking too hard about these things, and simply enjoy all the cute bear stuff. Okay, so what we have next is a show called Kizuna no Alel. Well, here's what it's about. Set in a world where the popular virtual YouTuber Kizuna Ai has taken the world by storm, she ended up winning some kind of virtual talent competition five years in a row. However, one day she up and vanished off the face of the earth. Or should I say internet? Anyway, several months have passed, and we focus on our lead character Miracle, a plucky young go-getter who just enrolled into Aiden Academy, which is a school that teaches people to become successful virtual artists. I would love to see the diplomas for that. So the anime will follow Miracle's quest to become a great virtual artist like her beloved Kizuna Ai, and along the way, meet some talented individuals also looking to become big names in the virtual world. So right off the bat, I should mention that I have absolutely no exposure to VTubers or the whole virtual personalities concept. I know that it became wildly popular in recent years with the arrival of Hololive and all that, and I've seen a bunch of naughty Yuri fan art of them, but the whole phenomenon just really never caught my attention. I don't know, maybe I just like having some kind of narrative to my anime girls. Anyway, so one of my first Yuri impressions. Well, I got some major Yuri vibes between Miracle and the blue-haired girl, so either the anime ends with them being a love couple, or perhaps Miracle will end up getting all the main girls and get her own personal harem. Then we can see them making tons of sweet and beautiful music together. You know, because they're idols. Speaking of idols, I just wanted to quickly mention that the blonde girl reminds me a lot of Ellie from Love Live. She even sounds like her too. Ah, damn. Alright, moving on, we got an anime called Otaku Elf, aka Exotic Omaru-chan. Pretty simple premise, a girl named Kogane Koito works as a shrine maiden and is personally tending to the whims of a local elf goddess named Elda. Problem is, the deity wants nothing more than to loaf around, play video games, and overall be a net negative to society. Talk about relatable. I haven't read the manga, so I'm totally going in blind with this series. But it seems like it's pretty safe to assume that the comedy dynamic will come from the ever-so-serious Koito trying her best to rehabilitate the lazy and indifferent Elda, with plenty of fish-out-of-water gags on the side. Question is, will there be Yuri? Well, I suspect we'll get some flirtatious moments, both between our two leads, and probably between Koito and the girl who looks to be her best friend. Basically, your standard cute girls doing cute things anime. Personally, I'd be satisfied if it was just entertaining. At least I have a good feeling that this show will make the right impression as a sitcom, but as a rom-com, yeah, we'll see. Oh, and I also wanted to comment on the animation real quick. Usually these straight-up comedy animes don't require impressive visuals, but they went all out with this one. It's a similar situation as Oni Mai and Bochi the Rock. Despite their simple premise, the showrunners clearly wanted to flex their artistic prowess and deliver a show that's both well-executed and pleasing to the eyes. Kudos to them. Oh, and that theme song slaps hard. Next is an original anime that I got a good feeling about. It's called World Die Star. 
What's it about? It stars a girl named Otori Kokona, an aspiring theater performer who auditions at a famous theater company in hopes of one day becoming the next world the biggest star. So right off the bat, the show reminds me a lot of Review Starlight, one of my all-time favorite anime. And not just because it's about theater performance, if you know what I'm saying. Don't know why, but my Yuri detector is buzzing like mad. I think it's partly due to the fact that at some point, the characters will be performing what looks to be a Takarazuka Review, which is basically a theater performance where all the characters are played by women, including male roles. And Judging by the shot here, it looks to be a romantic play. Oh yeah. Also, the fact that these girls will be doing plays in general is pretty promising. They basically have the opportunity to act out any scenario on stage, much to the glee of the audience. Don't know enough about the other cast members though, but there looks to be a lot of characters in this anime, so shipping will very much be frequent. Last thing I want to note is that this series is made by the manga creator Takahiro, which for those who don't know, also created Release the Spice and Yuki Yuna as a hero. So we appear to be in good hands, at least in terms of the Yuri. Alright, so our last two candidates aren't actually season-long anime, and the Yuri potential for them is rather iffy at this point, which is why I won't take up too much time talking about them. So the first one is an original net animation, from the I still can't believe how popular it is Uma Musume series. This time around, it will focus on some new horse girls, the main one being Naruta Top Road. I'm never gonna get used to these names. And it's your basic Uma Musume formula. A bunch of horse girls run like mad to win the big horse girl running competition. Please notice how excited I am from the tone of my voice. I don't know. How many times can you recycle a plot before it becomes old news? You gotta give me something to care about. Mix it up a bit. Give your characters some unique motivations. Anyway, in terms of the Yuri, I'm sure we'll get some adorable scenes between the characters talking about how much they admire and respect each other. Which of course will pave the way for shipping and an abundance of fan art. Just make sure not to loot the horse girls or you'll find yourself six feet under a pile of horse Shit. Trust me, I'm talking from experience here. And finally, we come to our last anime, which is the third movie installment to Princess Principal, Crown Handler. Just a quick refresher to everyone, this is an original anime with a full season and six sequel movies in the works, with two already out and a third one nearing this spring. Now on a personal note, I am a big fan of the first season. While it wasn't phenomenal, I can certainly give it a high praise and a hearty recommendation for those who are fans of action, intrigue, and decent character writing. Now so far with the movies, my reception to them has been fairly lukewarm but by no means are they bad. They have the usual great action scenes, amazing score, high production visuals, and more spy drama than you know what to do with. All these things are good and all, but I think the fact that they seem to be more plot-driven than character-driven is what makes them less interesting than the original anime. Eh, it's just a little opinion of mine. Hopefully I can elaborate more later down the road. However, one thing that is undisputable is the sheer lack of Anji and Princess development. The fact that your two lead characters whose relationship is the glue that holds this series together don't share any snuggle time on screen is unforgivable. The writers may have forgotten about these two, but I haven't, goddammit! Anyway, with the Venom out, I can only hope that the next movie will deliver the goods and return to what made this show shine in the first place. Fingers crossed. And that is it. If there's any other show that you think I should keep an eye on, please comment down below. Otherwise, we seem to have a pretty solid season. In fact, this year as a whole looks to be a spiritual successor to 2018. Certainly a huge milestone to the Yuri community, that's for sure. Anyway, I might make these seasonal videos more of a habit, providing that there's enough content to talk about. Let me know if you care enough about my ramblings, so that I'll have even more incentive to make them. Well, looks like Yuri fans will be eating well next season, and I'll be there to document every sweet and tender moment. Anyway, see you in spring, witches!